Ladies and gentlemen, it is apparent that we live in challenging times. Not so apparent, however, is the impact of COVID-19 on human rights and fundamental freedoms to which we are all entitled. Just like our health, they should not be taken for granted. At ODIR, the Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights, we have been following the situation closely across the OSE region. Let me highlight a few areas where we see particular challenges. Firstly, emergency-related laws and policies have been adopted, which in some cases have not followed principles of democratic lawmaking and have not had a clear legal basis or allowed for sufficient public scrutiny and independent oversight. Second are instances when restrictions on human rights and fundamental freedoms have not been fully in accordance with international law. Unfortunately, in some countries, emergency measures have been used as a tool to silence critical voices. Third, I would note concern about the worsening situation of society's most vulnerable groups. This includes people deprived of their liberty, minorities, including Roma and Sinti, and women and children victimized by domestic violence or attempts to exploit them online. Fortunately, there are ways to avoid negative consequences by following standards set out in international and regional human rights instruments. OTIR will soon publish a report where we assess the situation and provide practical recommendations for states which can be applied now and in future crises. I will close by drawing your attention to the activism of human rights defenders, including national human rights institutions, journalists and whistleblowers, who are working often at high risk to, to hold governments to account. They, alongside medical professionals and other frontline responders are helping to keep us safe. We must help to keep them safe. Thank you.